Hey guys, if you're following my taxidermy page, then you know exactly what this video is gonna be about. If you're finding this video through my biologist page, then surprise, I also dabble in some taxidermy. Not true taxidermy, I mostly work with bones. Here's a recent uh, raccoon that I did, more or less. And I used dermestid beetles to do that. Uh, so this project I've been working on for the past month or so is finally complete, or nearly. It's my going to be my new beetle home. I converted an old freezer to a thermostated heating incubator beetle palooza. So uh, spent a lot of time on this. Took a lot of work. I wired these lights, uh, well, two heating elements and a light. The light is actually on a switch. And that is one, so I can see what I'm doing when I open it up. And two, I wanna stick a GoPro mount right there. So that way we can do time-lapse videos of beetles doing their thing. It's set to hold a minimum of 80. It's a little low because it's freezing outside and I just opened the lid for a minute. Um, but this thermostat is amazing. If it gets too cold, it turns on those two heating elements on the inside. If it gets too hot, it turns on this fan, which is beetle proof. There's a fan on the inside, blows cold air in, there's the temperature probe. On this side, I have the humidistat. If it gets too humid, this fan turns on, blows air out. And there's the humidistat. Almost done. One of the last things I'm gonna do is clean up all these wires. I know it's super messy right now, but I'm just trying to figure things out. Uh, it's important to keep humidity low, especially when you have these heat elements going. Um, if it gets too humid, there'll be condensation that comes down and it will soak in the substrate. It'll create mold, it'll attract mites, and effectively could destroy the whole colony. So just added that as a precaution, uh, reduce humidity. And the temperature dropped again because the lid was open. Now, I've got this whole thing to run through here. This one expensive wire, uh, it has its own GFI. So I can run this whole thing through one outlet. So this will be the thermostat that runs the heating elements and the cooling fan. This is the wire to the bulb with the switch on and off. And this is the humidistat that runs that other fan. I know it's all messy, uh, bear with me. Today was the day I'm going to put the beetles in. Um, now, the current setup is over here. Oh, I made this. This is just a, a lot of bedding for them to burrow and pupate into. So this is my current setup. It's in a 75 gallon tank that I wrapped in aluminum bubble wrap and topped the towel. I've got two heating elements, thermostat, and a third heat pad. <clears throat> Got a white-tailed deer in there right now from one of my coworkers. You can see the beetles running around a little bit down there. Every time I open the lid, these wires it just falls down, so it's not really stable. You can't get in and out. All right. Well, without further ado, let's start with the the transferring process. Thank <laughs> you. 
almost done clearing this out. Uh, I was also working on a rat and a raccoon skull. But I figured this was a good time to uh, check up on this white tail. So you can see, I mean, they've been, they've been hollowing this thing out. Still lots of work to do. Probably give that a good soaking so it moistens up the meat. I'll go at it a little better. But you can see this is where the deer head was sitting and under it is a giant mountain of frass. So frass is the shed skins and poop of a healthy colony. So got a, quite a buildup down there. Now I don't want to throw that away because as you can see, it's still full of beetles. That one looks freshly molted. But also there could be thousands and thousands of eggs in there. So I want those to hatch out and join the colony. So I'm going to throw this frass in with the rest of the contents of the freezer. I had a, some brains and a paper towel here, but you can see uh, some adults, but here's some pupa. So after the larval stage, they'll molt one last time into this helpless little pupa that the adult will emerge from. Brains are really healthy for beetle colonies, but they are also really stinky. So I tend to take the brains out and then just give little puddles at a time. Help the growth rate a little bit. Yeah, these are super dry, so I'm glad I'll have a climate controlled freezer for them to uh, finally get good amounts of moisture without growing moldy or anything. Can't wait. This rat was super old. The important thing about these domestic beetles is that the substrate remains dry. That's why I'm keeping low humidity so the condensation doesn't soak into the substrate, creates mold. But the other important thing is that the food source remains wet, which is really difficult when you're trying to keep everything else dry. So what I tend to do is I cover the food with paper towel and then I wet that down. And what's gonna happen is, not only does it attract the beetles to the food source, but it keeps the food moist. They can drink right off the paper towel and keep the substrate dry. Okay, it's been a few hours. Figured I'd check the progress. Oh yeah, that's more activity than I think I've ever seen in this particular colony. So this particular colony is actually made of two separate colonies. Um, I ordered beetles two separate times. One from Simply Skulls, I ordered about 2,000 beetles. And then I ordered again from Southern Pride Dermestids, another 2,000. I think they might have been two different species, but as long as they're dermestid beetles and they eat meat and they don't eat each other, I think they'll be all right. I don't care if one wins out or another, I just want my colony to grow. So it looks like all is well and working exactly as intended. Awesome.